Thompson. Uh, thank you for taking the time uh, to give me uh, uh, the opportunity to share some thoughts uh, with you. You know, following uh, the attacks of 9-11, of uh, it took us in the federal government uh, a number of years to really develop the muscle memory uh, to work together in a very unified way uh, to respond uh, to the threat of counterterrorism. Uh, but we've developed uh, that ability uh, over the years to work um, uh, in, a, in a very synergistic, symbiotic way within the federal government and in addition, and critically, uh, with our foreign partners uh, because, of, of course, uh, the threat of terrorism uh, is a global and, and not a, a singular uh, one. In the realm of cybersecurity, we do not have the luxury of time, of years, uh, to be able to build either a domestic, cohesive, uh, responsive strategy, or in the international realm that we have the luxury of time uh, to work with our allies uh, to build a response. Because one thing that is so unique about the cybersecurity threat, and I would imagine that you heard it earlier today, is number one, uh, it is a purely borderless uh, threat. And so the uh, need uh, for cooperation on the international stage is compulsory, not collective. But also, and uniquely so to the cyber realm, uh, the ability to replicate the harm uh, in real time is unique uh, to the cyber uh, attack. Uh, very, very different uh, than other attacks that we have uh, encountered, either militarily or certainly in the law enforcement uh, realm. Uh, Dr. Aviatar Matani, of course, the head of Israel's National Cyber Bureau, said earlier this year, the cyber revolution is the third revolution after the agricultural and industrial one, and it's going to change all of our lives. And in one way in which it must change our actions uh, as, as governments is uh, to really eliminate the distinction between a domestic threat and an international uh, one. And here, the cybersecurity ecosystem must indeed be viewed as an international cybersecurity in, uh, ecosystem where cooperation uh, is critical, is a foundational principle, and where uh, homeland security, not just the homeland security of the United States, uh, but of our allies as well, is synonymous uh, with the word cooperation. Uh, the alleged cyber hacker, Hamid Firuzi, who was charged with a cyber attack against a water dam less than 20 miles from New York City, could have been anywhere in the world. And had he been successful in his attack, he could have easily uh, and in real time uh, launched the very same attack against other critical infrastructure, not only in the New York metropolitan area, but anywhere in our country and certainly anywhere else uh, in the world. Last summer, I had the privilege of signing a joint statement of cooperation between the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the National Cyber Bureau of the State of Israel. Dr. Matanya and I signed the agreement, and it reaffirms our country's commitment to cooperation, both to promote collaboration on cybersecurity as well as to promote collaboration on cyber research and development. And next month, I will be traveling to Israel again for Cyber Week 2016, hosted by Tel Aviv University. And our work is in collaboration is not only with the government of Israel, but also with industry partners in Israel to discuss and address the latest issues arriving, uh, arising from the evolving cyber technologies and methods used in defending critical infrastructure. Israel, of course, is uniquely positioned to be a leader in addressing the cybersecurity threats the world faces. Uh, the brilliance uh, that resides uh, in Israel is, of course, uh, world-renowned. Since 2002, Israel has produced six Nobel Prize-winning scientists. 
Uh, in addition, and this is something that I've learned uh, uh, quite significantly in my last visit uh, to Israel, uh, its, it, its ability to develop cyber talent within its military uh, ranks and then to transform that cyber knowledge into careers that serve both government and industry and the private sector. It's a unique pool of talent, um, uh, both uh, for uh, the government itself and the service of the public, and also from a private sector perspective. Uh, Israel's cybersecurity industry is second in the world, uh, second only to ours in the United States. And one thing, however, is critical in terms of the distinction uh, between uh, the cyber uh, structure in Israel and that in the United States, and if I can quote uh, Colonel Savoni as he recently told the Washington Post. The United States has more capabilities than Israel in cyberspace, but we are small. We are very anxious, and it's the difference between a speedboat and an aircraft carrier. We go very fast. Let me say a, a couple things in that regard. Number one, um, I hope that we in the United States are equally anxious. Uh, I think we all have to uh, be anxious uh, given um, the gravity of the threat, and I would say it's imminence, but quite frankly, it's current presence, number one. And number two, the United States, if it indeed is an aircraft carrier, and I, I think we certainly have aircraft carrier characteristics, um, uh, we have got to become speedboat uh, very quickly. Uh, uh, Colonel Simone and I were talking earlier, and he was speaking of the fact that uh, private industry's capacity to contract with the government is a very challenging one, that working through the uh, bureaucracy of federal government contracting rules and regulations uh, is, um, is quite time consuming and like. And we also, that's one element where if we have that characteristic as a carrier, we need to eliminate it very quickly because nimbleness and speed and agility are critical components of quality in the realm of cyber uh, security. Uh, uh, so we ourselves uh, very well may have certain things to transform, uh, but also this aircraft carrier is going to have to work very closely with the speedboat of Israel to make sure uh, that we work collectively um, uh, to address the harm uh, that we both face. Um, another area of challenge is, quite frankly, the definition of what is um, a company's, private entity's, uh, civic uh, responsibility in the realm of cyber security. Uh, this is an area of booming uh, profit. As Dr. Montagna said, it's a revolution, and revolutions bring uh, challenges, but they also bring opportunities. And many in the private sector uh, are pursuing the opportunities for profit, and of course that's something uh, that we encourage and we support. But there are certain aspects of cybersecurity that we would um, advocate not be sources of profit, but be sources of public good, and they become public commodities. And the cyber threat indicator is one of those. And our model in the Department of Homeland Security, and I hope all of you had the opportunity to hear Rob Silvers is in the audience here, and who is the head of our Office of uh, Policy uh, for Cybersecurity in the Department of Homeland Security, we, we promote uh, the following uh, paradigm, that the cyber threat indicator, if that is something that we can share without profit incentive, but treat it as a public good, then those uh, who receive the cyber threat indicators before they have suffered uh, that harm can better protect themselves and we can raise the bar of the cyber hygiene throughout our entire cyber ecosystem. So if one company, and the model we have built is as follows, if one company suffers an attack, it would share the cyber threat indicator with us in the Department of Homeland Security, and we are uniquely situated to receive that cyber threat indicator. We provide liability protection 
uh, pursuant to the new law that was passed at the end of this past year. We have, uh, we are a department that has a statutorily created Office of Privacy and Office of Civil Rights and Civil Liberties to protect those very fundamental uh, rights of individuals and entities. So if we receive that cyber threat indicator, we can disseminate that critical information to other companies, to other entities uh, throughout uh, the system so that they can uh, identify uh, any vulnerabilities that they might have that could be subjected to that cyber threat indicator and patch that vulnerability so that they don't suffer the very same harm that another entity did. And through the sharing of cyber threat indicators, either with the federal government as a disseminator to all, or even amongst themselves uh, in uh, uh, the private uh, sector, uh, we will raise our security and avoid the replication of harms. Uh, we, we hope that that becomes uh, the paradigm uh, of the future. Uh, we have built already in the Department of Homeland Security uh, the capability to receive the cyber threat indicators, uh, to strip them of personally identifiable information in real time and disseminate them more broadly. We look forward uh, to cooperating further uh, with our very uh, great ally and partner, uh, the State of Israel. Uh, we hope uh, that we will partner as a government uh, with, the, with the private sector so that in a public-private partnership, uh, we, uh, we strengthen all. And uh, I look forward to whatever questions you might have. And I thank you again for the opportunity to share a few thoughts. Yes, 